Hi and welcome to this tutorial on advanced tools for track laying. Uh, we're going to go into Kickstarter accounting and edit this route so that we can uh, start to play around with a little bit of track and get an idea of what these tools can do. Okay, so here we have a uh, section of terrain where I'm going to place some new track and I will run this track over to here and as you can see while I'm laying it you get a uh, track that fits nicely to the terrain <coughs> excuse me but that's obviously not what we want because there's no way a train is going to be able to drive along that track uh, and not derail so, what we do now is instead of making our track as so, so some people come along and they make a bit of a side, a siding for their train by just clicking the track down, and you'll find that if you do that and just leave it as is, you've got a lot of problems other than your track not being yeah, flat. The problems are these junctions here are red which means they're not using our new procedural junctions it uh, can't calculate it because the track isn't aligned correctly for it to do so so if you see any red uh, arrows and uh, circles rotating in surveyor around junctions that means the procedural junction is not being generated due to some reason uh, that your track is incorrect and you can also see it's a bit rough uh, it doesn't look nice because there's these curved tracks and usually uh, people aren't going to spend money to make some pretty curved tracks they want some uh, efficient tracks that are straight and cur curves mean expense and that's not what uh, we want so we want to try and avoid the, the curviness and make it more prototypical. Now under the tracks tab you've got a little arrow and an advanced button here. If you drop that down you get a whole bunch of tools that can really help you clean this up. So first of all let's get everything flat. Uh, you've got adjust height. Yes that could do it by adjusting uh, everything to be flat, but that's going to take a while. Uh, the next two we don't care about yet. These are delete spline point and insert spline point. Um, that obviously allows you to insert a spline point and move it around so you've got more control over your track, but we don't want that, so we'll delete that spline point. And the final one at the top there <coughs> is smooth spline height. Now, this is the one we want because what's going to happen is I'll just show you we're going to click on uh, let's say the height we want pick a height I'm gonna go with this one here that's where I want all my track to be so I'm gonna click that one and you see that this uh, terrain starts to flatten out from that spline point over there down to this spine point and the terrain snaps to the to the track so now you don't have these gaps or anything underneath your terrain and you don't have these kind of these bumpy little bits here and there that uh, we first laid down because the track the track was trying to stick to the terrain gradient now we've made the terrain uh, come up to the track and be flush with it in a in a smooth uh, spline height from the first spline height to the other spline height. So we do that with the rest of it. We can click all these and you can click a few times to make sure that uh, it keeps adjusting because you'll get bits like this where your terrain kind of still sits over the top of your track. So if you keep tapping away eventually uh, you'll get a nice flat terrain that's mapped to your track. Let me squish this one down too. So it's starting to get there, but 
still we've we've got a problem because we can see that the gradient of this track looks uh, a bit wrong. It's going to be hard for trains to get up there. So the next few options we have, uh, the next one is get gradient, and we can see we can say, oh, that looks pretty good. I'll I'll uh, I'll leave it like that. But if you actually click on get gradient and the track, you can see that this is a 2.91% uh, gradient, and that's not a great gradient to have in your track. So the next thing to do is to say, well, where, how high do we want uh, the the track to be? As in, what spline point are we going to take as reference to make all the other spline points the same height? So we can go down to here and say, get vertex height. And we click on a spline point that we're happy with. I think I'm going to use this one. So we click that, and it says it's negative uh, 11.47, which is the spline point's height in the uh, world. So next to it is apply vertex height, which means we're going to apply this height. And we're going to click on all our spline points. And you'll see them start to move a little bit. That one not so much. This one you will. So it's moved up to this height. Uh, and we've, we'll go and do these ones as well. So we click that. These are all jumping down now to the same height. There we go. I think that's all of them. Now you can see the track now is, is below the train because it's all mapped to this spline height. But what we can now do is go back to our smooth spline height and start to click our track. And the terrain will now map to that track nicely. And we have a nice, what should be near zero gradient on our track. There you go. So there it is, it's zero. Because all these spline heights are the same. Now we just need to make sure our terrain is sitting flush up against the track. So that we don't get any obscurities. Uh, you'll need to connect that up with something else or raise it manually. That one won't won't go any further. But everything else should be pretty flush. So that's how you get a nice flat track within a bumpy terrain. Uh, you can also use a tool called. We just raise this, and you've got uh, a tool called uh, Remove Gradient which anything with a gradient, which that does, that has, uh, that has obviously a rather large gradient, you can click on the spline point and it'll map that spline point back down to the terrain. So it's the opposite of smooth spline point where if we use smooth spline point, it will bring the terrain up to the track, whereas the remove gradient will take it down to the terrain. So these are really handy tools when building your track. Uh, they make life a lot easier and it's uh, rather quick. So I'll get rid of my changes to go back to where we were. And as you can see here, oh, that's actually fixed itself, which is good. So we've got our procedural junctions now working because that circle's not red anymore. I wonder if this one's red. It's not. I was going to show you an example of why it uh, was red, but we stretch it all the way out here, you'll see it will go red. So make sure that you play around with this until you get your yellow junction. There we go. So you can you can see where it actually changes as well. You can see the sleepers start to come together, the junction changes differently to get that procedural track uh, junction, sorry. So make sure they're never red. You want them to be yellow so the procedural junctions work. Uh, pending your track actually is a procedural track, of course. Um, all the Tain track ones are. So if you find them, you can use them. And finally, once we get these in place and we're happy that they're close enough, the last uh, very important one to uh, button to use is, or functionality to use, is the straighten uh, track button. Now, we don't want curved sidings, so all, all we have to do is hit the straighten track button, click on the track itself, and it creates us a nice straight track. And you can do it the same with this one. So they all start to get these nice little uh, 
pieces of junction that go into the actual straight track and it makes it look like a real railroad layer. So when you're laying your track down, make sure you use these tools. Straighten. Straighten is used for a lot of things. Uh, sorry, you should use straighten for a lot of things. Just to make sure it uh, all looks correct. That one probably needs to come over a tad bit because it's not quite straight. But you can easily click on it again if you don't like it. And it'll um, turn it back to the original uh, curved piece. So I hope this has helped. Oh, or given you some information in how to uh, use the advanced tools when laying your track so that you can uh, get your track layouts near perfect. Thanks for watching.